back to the podcast here. Um, I'm just I'm going I'm gonna just start reading just random uh, emails that I I got off my uh, off my web my web toad there. Uh, hey Bill, hi, how are you? Huge fan. I haven't read any of these things. I just I sort of glanced at it. Uh, you made me laugh every time. <laughs> Um, I recently saw a small interview in which you said buying a house, unless you are buying it straight up with money you have, meaning without a loan, I guess, is a stupid move. Could you please elaborate? Because I think you're out of your mind. That's not what I said. And also that was part of a longer interview and they took a 15 minute conversation and made it a minute and a half. Um, this is what he says. Let me tell you my situation. My wife and I have been renting a condo for $1,000 a month, not including utilities. Uh, Three bedrooms, garage, great neighborhood, all that jazz, the American dream, everything that the uh, American dream is all about. After a year of renting, total spent 12 grand, I decided I'm going to buy a place in the same neighborhood. Uh, I gave gave 10% down payment. Oh, oh, God, dude. Um, and my mortgage is now $870 a month, taxes included, while my rent was 1000 for the same place like the one I just bought. Now the rent money I am never going to see again. Um, that's 12000 gone forever in only one year, which I obviously don't regret spending since it was a necessity. However, let's say I pay for my house for 10 years. I would have paid roughly $100,000 off for it. What? Sure, I will get on taxes, interest rate from the bank, yada, yada. Then I go sell it. Even if the price for the house didn't go up at all, I'm going to see some of that money back. Sure, not all of it. But even if it's half of it, that's still way smarter than renting for 10 years and seeing none of it. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. You're going to present the usual argument. All right, dude. You're paying $1,000 a month to rent because you don't have like... 500 grand hanging over your head and you can leave whenever you want and if anything goes wrong on the condo somebody else has to fix it so you're sitting there acting like you got this condo and it's 870 a month and that is um 870 dollars a month and that is like your only expenses it isn't you're easily paying at least a thousand bucks. Let's and you want to talk about throwing money away. If you just make the uh, monthly payment, that eight hundred seventy, like eight hundred sixty of that is right in the toilet. That just goes to the bank. You don't own eight hundred seventy dollars more of your house. You own like nine dollars more. Um, they slowly bleed you for thirty years. I and what I was basically saying is that um, buying a house that you can't afford is a stupid move because all you're doing is staying in it, paying interest on it while it increases in value. The only person making money when you go to sell it is going to be the bank and the real estate agent. Those are the only two people. And um, I don't understand that whole thing. Like say you bought at the right time and then the, the thing shoots through the roof, right? Your house doubles in price. And then you sell it, and then you've doubled your money. But now you need a place to live. So you have to go go back into this market where everything's doubled. So it's just a lateral move. All the money you made, you now got to put into this other house unless you somehow downgrade your life. Why why would you want to do that? Um, The only way to make money, I think, really, in a a house is uh, if you can afford it and you can pay it off quickly. If you can pay it off quickly... Then, as the house increases in value, it's increasing in value for you. Because what happens, I feel, over the years, when you're paying the interest, the interest is always slightly ahead of how much the house is appreciating in value. And that's when you didn't get completely... If you bought at the, at the height of a bubble, like so many other people, um, you're upside down in your house. And you could stay in it for 30 years, and you still might, it still might not be worth as much. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really understand what you're trying to ask me. It's just like, I guess, yeah, you, you, after 10 years, you could sell your house and you would get some money, but you're not adding them. You're not adding this money properly. Like, let's say, okay, you were throwing 12 grand a month, uh, 12 grand a year 
into the toilet, you said. But you had the luxury of not having a half a million dollars in debt hanging over your head. You also had the luxury of you can basically give a month's notice and leave. Okay? Um, you don't have to go through the trying to sell the house and, oh, my God, is this the, uh, you know, the wrong time to be selling it and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, water main broke. I have to pay for that. You don't have to pay for anything. Twelve grand. Bing, bang, boom, it's all done. Condo thing, people come by, trim the hedges, mow the lawn. You don't have to pay for any of that. 12 grand a year. Done. It's a beautiful thing. Now, owning a house is a beautiful thing if you buy a house that you can afford. But if you're going to go in there and just pay 870 a month, um, as that house appreciates in value, it's appreciating in value for the bank, not for you. I hate to tell you that, sir, but that's basically it. Okay, so let's say now you're throwing 870 Okay, $8,700 a year, okay, to, we'll just say roughly, we'll say $8,500 a year in interest. Over 10 years, you're talking about, you know, it starts to go down the more you've paid in interest. That first 10 years is mostly interest. So you're going to give them like $75,000 you're going to throw into the toilet, all right, plus all the expenses, all the taxes of owning a house, all that I'm going through right now, Um. It, it makes paying $1,000 a month and not owning way better, way better. The fact that you can just leave whenever you want to, and if there's a problem, you can call somebody up and be like, yeah, dude, you know, you need to fix this. I will not stand for this, me and my $1,000. So um, you're paying way more than 870 bucks a month is all I'm saying. And I'm not saying, uh, like, that's great that you actually, what you should do, is are you taking that extra $130 a month that you're saving and throwing that, at least throw that at your principal, anything, to somehow start sawing away at the chains around your ankles? Because um, do this, sir. Do this. Whatever your principal is, okay? Multiply your monthly payment times 12 and then multiply it times 30, and it's going to be roughly two and a half, two and a half times uh your loan was okay so if your loan was say for 500 grand you're going to pay them back probably anywhere from 1.2 million dollars to 1.5 depending on what your interest rate was okay and i don't think in 30 years you're going to get a million and a half dollars for that thing and let's say you do forget it you paid all the taxes and all the had to put a new roof and fix the driveway and the electrical and the pipes and the water damage and the god knows what else the termites and all that happened. I mean, you'll if you break even, you've crushed it. That's all I'm saying. All right? That's why I feel like if you can buy a house that you can just pay off, even if, if you can just pay it off in five years, you're better to keep renting and buy a house in another state you don't want to live in. Just buy that thing. Get people in there paying the mortgage, and then you, you pay, pay down the principal. You're better to do that and then sell that. And use the equity in that to then get into a where you live, where you want to live. And uh, but uh, that whole thing, getting into a house, and all you're asking is what is the monthly payment going to be? That's what I was trying to say. But they cut out a ton of what I was, uh, what I was talking about, sir. Okay, so there you are. Was that boring? Well, it kind of bored me too. Um, let's let's steer into the boring and let's do a little more advertising. Uh, this podcast started fast and it's dying a slow.